Hello and welcome to the Osterschleben track guide for the MX-5 Cup. Leave a comment below if you would like to have a free lap analysis or if you have any other questions about this circuit. Going into turn one, one of the best references that I like to use for turn in is this access road here on the side. The best way to think about this set of corners is to focus on using the throttle and the brake as tools for manipulating the weight and balance of the car. One of the most important things that I've found through this set of corners is after you dab the brake a little bit, turning into the first corner, utilizing between 10 to 30 percent throttle to shift that weight back to avoid spinning has helped me find a lot of time through this set of corners. So let's let it run through, take a look at the telemetry, and see what I am talking about there. So you can see through that corner over here, there's a small dab of the brakes, somewhere in the 20 to 30 at most percent range. And that is mostly to put the weight over the nose to give you a little bit of rotation coming through that corner. Um, as you can see, I am then applying a little bit of throttle. This is not to go faster or increase speed. This throttle is mostly maintenance to help me balance the car better before I enter the braking zone, which then leads into a trail break. Now looking at this corner here, you can see what I mean by asking for the rotation. So with this little bit of brake input, this is me asking for the rotation going into the corner. You can see the angle of the car here. You want to use most of this curb. You can actually touch a little bit of the, the sausage curbs on the inside as well. However, if you utilize too much of the sausage curbs, you can get a slowdown penalty or upset the car, causing it to spin. Now, at this point, you can see me applying a bit of throttle. And as I mentioned, that is specifically for balancing the car. With the amount of angle you see in the car here, it's very easy to spin off to the left. And utilizing the throttle puts a bit of weight back onto the rear of the car to make it less likely to spin through this series of corners. And then again, asking for a bit of rotation through this corner with a little bit of a trail break. And then the goal is to be as early on throttle as possible for this exit and to utilize all of the track running out. The goal is to utilize all of the runoff and the green curbing on the exit to carry as much speed down the straight as possible. Now going into turn three, you can see on the right there is curbing. Um, I like to brake just after the car passes a bit of this curbing on the outside. So what I would say is maybe take a look at your chopper cam and I'm applying the brakes right about here, right about where this post is um, or just after you pass the beginning of this curb. Now going into turn three here, one of the things that I've found to help the most is really focusing on cutting distance and really perfecting that trail brake. You can see you're not utilizing a huge amount of brakes. You don't need to slam it to 100% brake here. Um, you want to make sure you're using the trail down here as a way to put the weight over the front tires to get as much rotation through this corner as possible. Um, and, and with that, you can then feed back into the throttle. You can see I didn't just stab into the gas. I kind of had to hesitate a little bit, knowing that I would run too wide. And then you can utilize all of the runoff here. But you notice here, as the car tilts to the right, the camber falls off. So if you get on throttle too soon, it's very easy to run off into the grass here and lose a lot of time. This sequence of corners I think is very interesting and cutting distance and keeping clean has been the quickest way through it. One thing to note as you see these orange anti-cut barriers on the side here, if you position your car over this line and you touch any of those, you will get a slowdown penalty. So try to avoid opening up this corner too much because it just leads to penalties.
going through the sequence of corners, as mentioned, I find that just hitting the apexes, cutting distance, and being clean is the most effective thing. And now, what I really like to focus on as well is getting a good straight breaking zone into this corner. And you're going to be breaking around a peak of 60% or something of that nature. And what you want to do is lead this into a, a very progressive trail break to get your nose pointed for the exit because this turns into a a long i guess carousel type corner which is a sweeping exit and you want to make sure that you can get back on throttle as soon as possible on the exit of this corner and as you can see i'm just dragging that brake a little bit to get the weight on the front i have a little bit of hesitation until I can get back to full throttle. And one of the best references I find in this corner is actually using the end of this curbing. What you want to do is to try to get back to flat out before you get there. Going into this chicane here, one of the things that I do feel that I tend to do too often, like I did on this lap, is I hit this sausage curve very hard, which does upset the car a little bit. I do think maybe turning in a little bit later and avoiding that might be the best option. And also, one thing worth mentioning is getting as close as possible to these anti-cut slowdown curbs. Um, the further to the left and the closer you can get to it, the better it is for a qualifying lap. However, just be mindful of the fact that if you touch that, you're going to get a slowdown penalty. So for racing, you may want to stay a little bit further to the right and sacrifice your exit by a tenth or by a few hundredths. So you can see here, going through this corner, I want to position the car back to the left and then focus on getting flat as soon as possible without going off into the grass here, which is very easy to do, especially if you hit, if you hit that sausage curve. Going back, you can see... The goal through here is really taking a look at, say, the chopper cam. The goal through this is to be as close to that as possible. I left some room for safety in this corner, and on a perfect lap, I would have been much closer to that barrier, and that might have been able to find me another half of a tenth or so. Now, going down this back straight, I like to use the gigantic billboard as my reference. Um, if you will, sort of the imaginary 50 is probably where you would break. But for me, right as this solar group board starts to go off the screen and the side um, supports end up going towards the pillar, it that's about where I break. So right about here, right as those pillars are about to go behind the A pillar of the car, I'm on the brake. Again, focusing on a lot of trail braking through this corner. This is not 100% threshold brake. This is all about positioning the car. And I think this is one of the most important corners on the track because of a, a couple of reasons. I think a lot of people are pushing the car very hard into this corner. And I want to look at one major thing is the distance here of this straight. This is a very short straight. While our next corner goes to a very long straight. So with that in mind, what we want to do is we want to sacrifice a little bit of time on the exit of this corner here. And we want to stay tight to the right to open up the radius of the corner for the longer straight to make sure we can stay flat through that whole corner. Now going back a little bit to start this over, we're going into this corner with that 50-ish percent, 60 percent trail break. And what we want to do is really be able to stay flat all the way here through this final corner. Now, you can see I did utilize some of the curbing that does bump you a little bit wide. It would be ideal on a perfect lap to avoid hitting these curves. So avoid striking the curb here, position the car further over to the right here. Now, in this position, we are... 100% throttle, we are flat. Um, if I had the car positioned a little bit cleaner, I would be able to avoid striking this curb, which allows you to carry a bit more speed because this curb bounces you out wide. But we were able to still stay 100% throttle through this without getting an off-track penalty. Going into this final corner, there's really no brake reference. Um, a lot of people simply are just lifting through this corner. I've found that a tiny touch of the brake actually helped. And on this lap, I was a little bit progressive going back into the throttle. I may have been able to be 100% at this point, but you can see that just balancing it a little bit and then going through the final corner here. What I found is this inside curb is something to be avoided. Uh, as much as possible. When you hit that curb, it just bounces you off into the gravel here. So I did want to rewind really quickly and take a look at a couple of things. From the chopper cam, you can take a look. You're able to utilize a lot of this road. 
So don't be too afraid of getting off tracks in this spot. You can cross that line, you can utilize the green curbing, and then even going into here, as long as you keep one tire touching that line, you're good. Obviously, you can't drive down this access road to open it up, but taking a look at this corner, you do really want to utilize all of this room on the left to make sure the final corner is as open as possible. Now, going through the final corner, as mentioned, you want to try to be as tight as possible on this curb. You can see I left a tiny bit of room there. When you hit that curb, it, it can bounce you wide and set your, your trajectory off into the gravel, which then slows you down significantly for that straight. Now on exit, just a little bit progressive rolling into the throttle, get back flat, and then power through the finish line. So that is it. That is a lap of Wasserschleiden circuit for the MX-5 Cup. If you guys have any questions or would like me to take a look at any of your laps or if you have a replay saved that you would like for me to review, leave a comment below and I'll take a look at it.